I'm Michaela Haas, the author of um, Dakini Power. In short, a Dakini is a messenger of wisdom. What's unique in the Tibetan tradition is that there's this idea of the Dakini as a very confident, even fierce, attractive, seductive, independent woman as a role model for, for women that doesn't really exist anywhere else in any other tradition like this. So when I first started studying Buddhism in India and Nepal, all my teachers were men. And then even when I came back to Europe and did a PhD in Asian studies at the university, there too all my professors were men. So after a few years I was wondering, where are the women? Why are there no women? And uh, so I, I went and I sought them out and I was surprised to see that there was no book about the life stories of the most accomplished female Tibetan Buddhist teachers. And it's not that there weren't any, it's just that they aren't as much in the limelight. The Dakinis often teach more with their example and their life stories rather than with words. So I thought it would be really fitting to write a book about the life stories of these women. What drives a young librarian from London to board a ship to India? meditate in a cave for herself for 12 years, and then start a nunnery in India, basically all by herself. What motivates a Malibu surfer girl to travel to Japan, become a nun, and now head up the most important international organization for Buddhist women called Sakyadita, the Daughters of the Buddha. How come a good Jewish girl from California, Cherry Green, travels overland to Asia, decides almost overnight to become a nun, and now has started one of the most innovative and actually the first Tibetan Buddhist monastery for Westerners in Washington State. Few people know that Pema Chodron, who is now beloved by so many as a best-selling author of, of wonderful books, was actually an elementary school teacher. Her life can roughly be divided into two parts of almost equal length. One is her quite ordinary family life before she found out that her husband was having an affair and the years after when her own life fell apart and she was trying so hard to find some new ground and tried everything in the spiritual supermarket until she found Buddhism and found her teacher and then went on to become this wonderful role model for Buddhist practitioners in the West. You know what really interested me was how they dealt with the challenges, how they dealt with illness and divorce and loss, um, how they dealt with the cultural differences. So many women are looking for meaning in their lives, and so few of us get around to doing something about it. And here are 12 women who followed their dreams, who followed their path against all odds.